Good evening and welcome to The Caring View, the only online live social care chat show which goes out weekly. Before we get started, all the views we express tonight are of our own and not the companies represent. And please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And yes, I know I tell you every week, there is a bell. Um, and to uh, prove to you all there is a bell, we have put together a quick little video just to show you how you can subscribe to our channel so you do not miss out. So here we go. Hello, I'm Adam Pennell, one third of the Caring View team. I'm here to show you how to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of our videos and content. So the first thing you need to do is head over to YouTube. Once you're in YouTube, go to the search bar at the top and type in the Caring View. You'll see we come up at the top here with our logo. If you click the Caring View now, it brings you through to our channel where you can see all of our videos and our playlists of all the videos that we've done so far. So all you need to do is hit the big red button that says subscribe. So once you've left click subscribe, it will tell you you've subscribed. And then if you hit that bell and down to all, you will get notified of all of the uploads and all of the new content on our channel so you never miss out so thank you very much for wanting to subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you every tuesday take care told you there was a bell however not next tuesday because we're on thursday next week not tuesday so i know that's a little bit misleading and they're saying every tuesday but no it's a Thursday. mark and dawn how are we both i'm very good thank you how are you Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm like you. I'm in the festive spirit. Are you, Mark? Are you feeling okay now? I am okay now, yes. I am okay. So. Mark is our super trooper, holding the fort last week, feeling on the web today, but still, you know, banging the drum for social care. So I would say Mark needs an award, but he's already got trophy cabinets full of them. Congratulations on your BCE award. What was it for? Thank you very much. Effective Leadership Award. So, yeah, very honoured. So. Thank you very much. Well deserved. Well deserved. So, what's new in the news this week? Well, we were talking about it just before we went live about the care workers bonus. What do you so, think? Well, t to me, this should have happened months and months and months ago. This should have happened in conjunction with other of our nations. And um, as much as everybody knows I love the NHS, I do wonder why the NHS is getting involved in a social care bonus. Because I understand so, that it was uh, going to be capped at a certain amount, but now the NHS has suggested another. So for those that don't know, um, ADAS had suggested that care workers in uh, the UK got a £1,000 Christmas bonus to stop them from leaving the sector over winter to keep them in their jobs. Um, NHS chiefs have batted down that 1000 and said that preferably it should be a lower number. You know, at least £500 is what, they, is what they've said. They've not given an official figure themselves. Um, I'm with you. I think it's wonderful. I think they deserve it. I don't think any of us should be talking about taking away any money from anyone in social care. I think when you take into account the unfair um, to care report and it shows that NHS workers are paid 7,500 on average more than their social care counterparts, what's a thousand pounds? I know the money's got to come from somewhere, but we're shoving up income tax next year. Can't we just borrow it from the allotted money that was going to the NHS when it should have been going to care. Why not? I don't know. Is it the answer? I think another question, and I don't think it is. Um, that's just my opinion. I think more needs to be done to keep them in the workforce. What do you think, Mark? Do you think money is the answer? I don't think money is the answer. I do. I can see why um, health has waded in, because it's not just social care. But it surprises me that they aren't pushing for more, because it's it's pharmacies, it's dentists, it's opticians. It seems to be anybody in health or social care. Right. I think the only thing that worries me is that it's taxable and it can affect people's benefits. Obviously, a lot of staff working in social care are low paid, so are on benefits. So I think we saw this in, it was either Wales or Scotland or Ireland, where care workers were actually trying to say we don't want it because actually we're worse off receiving a £500 bonus because obviously it then stops the benefit payment because it's all obviously all in but yeah it's not, i was just looking at it it's not um 
it's not pensionable, but it is tax. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. But I don't I don't think money's the answer. And I think a lot of a lot of providers have, you know, recognised their staff and yeah. I think the amount of money there is, maybe something else could have been done to promote social care as a whole. And it's always the case, isn't it? You know, and I think the last week's mandate policy actually coming into effect. Somber music, please play. I don't think any of us really thought, thought this did come, but it has done. Um, it, I, I feel sorry for everyone who, are, you know, is no longer working in the sector now because they can't do because of the mandate. And then all of a sudden this thank you payment is being spoken about when actually everyone in England should have got it, like you say, Dawn, at the same time as our as our um, dissolved nations. But who are we to say anything? Who are we to say anything? Uh, mandating of the policy uh, vaccination full course for deployment in social care services obviously come into play now. Thoughts? Have we heard anything? Has anyone mentioned anything? Are we seeing problems starting to arise yet? Yeah, I think that the, the whole mandate. I think what 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 I was I was talking to a member of staff who I've, I've only worked alongside a few weeks, and she didn't want to have the vaccine and was opposed to the mandation. And had we had a, we had a discussion, and she said, "This is this is the government's decision for me not to work." And when she was looking at the exemption, she said, "There's not enough exemption yet." So her, her reply to me was, OK, then, well, what I'll do is when they exempt all the NHS staff, because that was her feeling with it being a Cinder, to, to her being a Cinderella service to the NHS, when they exempt all them because they won't want everybody to leave, I'll just reapply for my job because then I'll use that exemption. So I think that a lot of the social care staff are kind of feeling it to an extent where hang on a minute, so we're protecting the NHS for the winter, but we're not going to protect the social care system. And that is the frustration with the people that have left. And there was that really harrowing video that made me really sad of that carer who was so upset about leaving her job and leaving the residents that she had cared for for such a long time. Yet nobody's uh, the, the people that jumped on the bandwagon as far as i'm concerned are those that want to be negative about the fact that she chose not to have the vaccine and all we hear about is education and 100 percent people need educating but that's also coming across now is quite condescending people have an understanding of their own feelings surrounding vaccination i think we need to be really careful about this push of we need to educate these care workers they are educated people. They're very skilled, educated people. And, I, and you know, we have said as the Care and View team, everybody needs education and everybody needs a discussion and every we need to step forward with this. But at the same time, the feedback that I've got over the last couple of weeks is we don't need educating. We've made our own decision. And I think we're coming across as condescending at times. And I think we need to rein back on that and let these people make their own decision. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think this is something that um, Ian and Jane might have quite a bit of an insight on when we bring them in to discuss uh, their, their management networks because they see their posts every single day and and they'll probably have more to say on this. Now, I don't want to go short on an opinions, Mark, so I know I've not asked you. Um, however, I have just noticed like um, a number of people have said I've got reindeer horns right now um, on my because <laughs> of my light fitting. But Dawn, just before we bring Jane and Ian in, do you want to discuss what we're doing over Christmas? So I'm really excited about this. So um, a while ago, I brought an idea because I wanted to elaborate on the amazing work that social care teams do. And I wanted to make sure that over the Christmas period, a really hard period, just on top of the mandating of vaccines and staff are leaving, I wanted to bring to the forefront with the Care and View team about how important everybody is. So we discussed the Christmas Advent campaign in respect of the hero teams and the, the individual heroes within social care. So we developed a video and I'm sorry I sound, I do really sound very, very Norfolk in this video. <laughs> no, I do. Everybody keeps commenting about how I need a combine harvester. <laughs> So that's bullying. So I want to share it now because this is really important to me that everybody gets their nominations in. We have had 
so many so far yet we need more and more and more because we want to shine a light on the amazing work that everybody has done not just at christmas it's not just about christmas but it's about the whole year the whole 19 months and how everybody's gone above and beyond which we feel everybody obviously has so adam's about to play the video everyone. Today the Care Review team heard a quote from our new care apprentice, Mr Ed Balls, in which he cited, I thought I understood what social care was and I didn't. We've all endured this lived experience over the last 19 months and this Christmas at the Care Review, we want to celebrate you all with our very own Christmas Advent campaign each day through December. We want to open the doors of our advent calendar, not just to chocolate, but to all of you and your amazing work throughout the services or anybody associated with social care. We need your nominations with an explanation of how wonderful you are and all the amazing things that you've done over the past 18, 19 months. And we want to hear from all services, not just elderly care home services, but across the board in social care. We want people like Ed Balls, to have an understanding of social care and the amazing work done each and every day. It can be a team, it can be an individual, or even somebody in receipt of care. We love to share your stories, and what better way to share Christmas joy all through December if it's not embracing social care. So please send these to thecareinview at gmail.com. There should be a little banner running across the screen and with pictures and videos, and of course, so much detail, and we can't wait to receive them. <laughs> that is so awesome. I think it's fantastic. And I will say that we have had a ton of nominations so far, and we know there are only 24 days in Advent, but I don't think we should stop at 24. I think the more nominations we get, the ones that will spill over, I think we can do something special with to recognise all the nominations that we get. So Dawn, Mark and I will work together to figure out what we can do with everyone else's nominations because we do, like Dawn says, want to celebrate everybody. I think it's a great idea, Dawn. And I think everyone else does as well. So, yes. Right, tonight's guest. Mark, would you like to introduce? Yes. So tonight we're joined by a regular face on the show, Jane Brightman, who is the manager of the Outstanding Manager Network on Facebook. We're also joined by Ian Clegg, oh, who is coming in and come out, and is <laughs> again, who wants to connect her Facebook page. Good evening, both. How are you? Good evening. Very well, thanks. Good, thank you. Good, 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 good. Very excited to have you both here. Thanks so, James, you're most welcome. Since last time you, you joined us, uh, there's been a change in position. Do you want to tell everyone what you're doing now? Yes. Yeah, so I am now with NHSX and I am in the digitising social care team and we are obsessed with all things digital in social care. And I have to say, the organisation itself is really, really all down for social care. So it's really nice to hear um, lots of kind of working together with health, um, how we can you know work together and bring social care into the fold in a really positive way, not a kind of do unto way. So, yeah, really exciting. Obviously missing everybody at the Institute, but... I'm keeping them happy, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Ian, huge welcome to the show. Do you want to tell everyone a bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks very much. So um, I'm Ian and I run the Care Connect Network. I started it up earlier this year um, after I'm, I'm, I'm a nutrition and caterer management consultant for the sector. That's what I did until something happened last year threw the world into a little bit of disarray. Um, it was in the papers, I think. And um, <laughs> And then over the year, I started seeing people asking for help and saw that there was a lot of um, 
care suppliers out there, like the independent ones like myself that were going, look, we'll help you. We can do things, you know, and showing a lot of care. And I wanted to bring together those two groups of people. So the suppliers and the care providers. Um, and that's that's basically what I did. Um, and I've been doing that since January. I mean, fantastic. The, the more networks that are out there, the better. And that's the whole reason we're here discussing this tonight, because um, we all know Mark, Dawn and um, myself are fully aware of what it's like to be a manager lost in, in the sector and not knowing what to do. And networks like the Care, uh, Connect Network and the, the Outstanding Managers Network. And I do have to say, we were supposed to have an extra guest on tonight, Mr. Jonathan Cunningham um, from the Managers in a Circle. Unfortunately, he can't be with us. Uh, he is back at the ranch looking after the crazy cats. Um, so, you know, we send huge love to John and I hope everything's okay and we can't wait to have you back on the show. It's an open invitation to come back on the show. Um, prime guest spot just on your own. Um, but without networks like those, I know countless managers will have been lost. I mean, Mark, you did so much work for managers, um, not just before, not during the pandemic, you know, solely, even beforehand. So, you know, tell us, what were your experiences of those networks? You know, I think those networks are great just to, for many reasons, really, whether you're stuck in something that you're working on or you just don't know the answer. And I think quite often people turn to the CQC and they don't get a response that they want. It's go and read the guidance. And actually, the, the answer isn't in the guidance. And I think you can just pop a question on whatever it is. You know, does anybody know what the regular training date is for moving the hand? And you'll be met with so many people that say, I do this, I do. And it's just a conversation starter. And you can get ideas, you can network with people. During COVID, you know, it was great because there was obviously nobody really knew what was going on. Nobody knew what guidance to implement, what to put in place. And actually it was just loads of managers getting together saying, you know, I'm doing this, I've tried this, this didn't work, I'm doing this, how often are you to, you know, just the information that's there is just so regular, it's up to date. And actually you can meet people that are working alongside you. So it also gives you the chance just to kind of, talk about what the issues are, you know, whether it's recruitment at the moment, which is dire, or whether you, you know, you've got staffing issues, or you've got issues of your own, or you just want, you know, I mean, I think during COVID, there were many a video of me just dancing around in my kitchen, you know, I just, I try to use it. And I, I do feel hypocritical sometimes when I go on now, because obviously, I'm not a registered manager offering advice. And then people are like, No, you should still offer it because you've got the experience. But I think it's just, I try and just share things. So I know like every now and again, I think I do it last Friday, just pop on and be like, first three people to ask me what what document they want and I'll upload it. And yeah, just trying to give back really and support and just show people that actually you can give and you can take from it, which is what it's all about. You're on mute, on mute, Adam. <laughs> Oh, I had a right panic then. Yeah. Massive. Oh, that, I, we need those. We need those. I'm full of technical faux pas at the moment. I'm just absolutely horrendous. We had a meeting the other day and they were like, you, you're okay logging into Zoom and letting everyone in, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, of course I am. Completely forgot the password and blocked us out for 30 minutes and the meeting ran over. Oh, I'm, honestly, I'm useless. I'm useless. So, Jane, um, you know, your network has got what, over 6,000 members in it now. How fast has it taken to grow that? And have you seen an increase during the pandemic of people joining the group? Yeah, so we set that network up in 2014. So it's been going for a while. Um, I think it was possibly one of the first ones out there. And we set it up because we had a training company at the time, me and Jude, who run it. And, and we had Plymouth-based man managers who were saying, we love coming to your training sessions, but we'd like somewhere to kind of go in between them. So it was literally just a Plymouth network for managers in Plymouth and then we had kind of Devon and Cornwall managers saying well, well we're close can we join and we're like yes come on in and then people just kept asking to join from random places like Norfolk and Lancashire and Essex and we were like oh okay come on in then because you're a manager too so you know it's all the same and it just grew and grew and grew and yeah, the pandemic, I'm, I think it's probably doubled in size during the pandemic. I think, you know, we just we were getting like hundreds of people join each week. And, you know, it, it was needed, wasn't it? They Places like that were needed. I remember Adam right at the beginning of the pandemic putting a video on there of how to don and doff PPE. 
And yeah, it was like the best video. And that was when I first got to know you, Adam, because you were like, oh, it's a really awful video. And everyone was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Adam's back on. The fact, I'm back on you. The fact was, I looked like a blooming salami trying to put that apron on. I'm in a big red jumper and I'm squeezing this apron on. I'm like some sort of prime salami. But it was because they didn't have the information then. You know, and they were sending out these huge technical videos from Department of Health and Social Care that were like 30 minutes long. And it was like, gloves, you know, masks. This is what you do. This is how you take it off. This is just what you do. And it's like, Mark, oh, I'll share it. Someone might use it, someone might not use it. And that's the thing about these networks. If no one uses it, fine. If 100 people use it, great. It's there for, for an option. Loads of people use that video, Adam. I, I, I can't tell you how many people commented to say that that was just amazing. That was exactly what we needed. I've shared it with all my staff. We know what we're doing now. So, you know, I, th I think managers tell us regularly that they turn to the network to get guidance rather than waiting for government guidance or, you know, trying to wade through hundreds of pages of guidance. So, you know, there's a lot of value in them. Mute again. I was, I was just having a look, Jane, 6.3 thousand managers that you've got in your group. So I was just having a look at Jonathan Cunningham's, which is called, for anybody who wants to join it, the Care Managers Inner Circle, and also the Skills for Care Registered Manager group. We did try and get somebody on from there. So they've got 3,000 or just over 3,000. Why do you think the Outstanding Manager has got 6.3? Why do you think it's double in your, I don't know if you're part of the other two groups or not uh yeah i'm part of jonathan's um i don't know maybe it's just because we've been going longer that's that's maybe all there is to it you know and i don't know i can't think of any other reason because they're all really supportive and great places to be uh, you know that i don't think we do anything different particularly yeah you are you are right though it was on about three th and then all of a sudden it just shot up all of a yeah. sudden overnight but so I might be able to help a little bit there because as everybody knows, I'm a little bit of a technophobe and I'm a bit useless. So it wasn't until, I will be honest, at the beginning of the pandemic that I joined a single group because I, I made the assumption that they were going to be negative spaces because I had always seen social media as a negative space. I'd never seen it as a positive remit in order for me to gain information because of past history and things that had happened. So I joined it at the beginning of the pandemic and gained a lot of insight and thought, actually, it's not the negative space that I thought it was going to be. So I'm one of those people that joined it at the beginning of the pandemic and saw Mark's posts and saw Adam's posts and saw other posts and saw that I, actually people were gaining a lot from it. And I did at the beginning when I joined um, and I remember thinking at the time also thinking oh I, well I hope they let me join because I really need some help and it was also that theory of well can I prove that I'm a manager can I do this can I do that so there was always that kind of worry there but yeah I'm one of the ones that joined at the beginning and then kind of branched out from there and felt more confident with it so maybe it was people's confidence in because all of a sudden everybody had to use social media or they had to use teams or they had to use zoom or they had to use linkedin in order to gain information and that was the reason that was the reason that i joined in order to ensure that i could kind of network and have an understanding of what was going on with colleagues that were in the same kind of boat that i was so yeah, I was one of those, Jane, and I and I have to admit that I, initially I thought, oh, it's, it's going to be a negative space, but it never turned out to be. But maybe that's why there was a lot at the beginning because people were like me. Yeah, that makes sense. What you don't actually know is Jane's also a bit of a Jackie Weaver. Um, is it Jackie Weaver? Was that her name? Was she called Jackie <laughs> yeah. Weaver? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jane, honestly, she's like, you know those machines that filter out the wrong coloured foods and they flick out all the bad stuff? Jane's like that with negativity. She's like, nope, not here, not here. It is about a positive space. And I think that's what's needed is is really constructive um, ownership of those groups. Because sometimes these groups grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And the admins just go, oh, I don't have time for this. I'll just, I'll just let them do what they want and, and that's that. But it really is that safe space and it's, you know, down to you, Jane, that's made it that safe space by keeping out that. Because I know I, especially during the first 
lot of the pandemic. I got some really horrific abuse from people. And, you know, all I could talk with is, Jane, I really don't think this is fair. Should we have a chat with them and should we sort it out? Try to? No. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, I, th I think we tried to reason with, with people, didn't we? Because, you know, we knew that people were stressed and so we tried to reason. And, and it, you know, if, if people aren't going to play nicely, and we're very clear in the rules, you've got to play nicely, there's, there's room for healthy debate, but we're not going to be rude and unkind to each other because... That's not how we operate in social care, and it's certainly not how we operate on the group. And it, it's not just yeah. down to me, it's Jude as well. So Jude Vernals, who's my... And he's huge. Oh, Jude. <laughs> um, so Ian, your, your group's relatively new, um, and I think yours is a bit of a different sort of approach to this whole networking thing, because it is more about networking with, with other providers as well. So how is it going you know what are the biggest insights you've, you've had since you've started this this care connectors and we will post links to both of your groups in the chat if that's okay for people to have a look at and yeah, enjoy if they want to yeah um it's it's very interesting so as i say i set out the group i i was in one of the other groups which is the care home manager support network and I said right at the beginning, I was going to post a funny on every day um, why this pandemic was going on tonight's chuckle that I put on at between nine and ten. If any of you are in that group, you'll have seen it, possibly, maybe not. One of the reasons why we're doing something else with the, with the groups. Um, but it, I didn't realize I'd be doing it 18 months <laughs> later, right enough. But I haven't missed one day. I've posted every single night since the end of February. So... I got into that and then I started seeing people going, we need help with this. And then people like me going, I can help you with that. And then I was getting told off for advertising what we do. And I just thought to myself, hmm, it's a little bit counterintuitive because there's lots of us out there. I can understand why it happens in the other, why it happens in the groups. So this is why I made sure that I was very clear in what happened in the Care Connector group. But I could see why it was done, but it was also counterintuitive because there are lots of people like me out there who want to help and did provide help to a lot of people right at the beginning. Um, but then getting told, you know, you can't tell people what you do. And it's like, well, they've asked that question. <laughs> um, so what I did was I set up the group and basically I said that any supplier that's in a part of the membership they can post once a week what they do in the group. They can just put it out there. Um, and then if a care person asks for something, you're not allowed to reply to them directly as a DM. You can say in the thread, "That's I can help you with that. And then the conversation can be taken on from there. If that person then wants to engage with the person that said I can help, then fine. If they don't, then that's also fine as far as I'm concerned. But I wanted to make it a safe space for care providers and management, not just managers, but all levels of management. So clinical leads, managers, um, heads of department, your catering teams, your um, facilities managers, the um, head of housekeeping and things like that. I want them in the wanted them in the group as well. And it was basically to give people that opportunity to let people know that there's other people out there apart from the big ones with the big pockets that can afford all the marketing. And that there's a lot of independents out there that are there to support you and give a good service and act a lot quicker and react to things. Um, so I did that bit of it, and then it sort of grew arms and legs over. But that was last year I set that up. And then it grew arms and legs sort of in my head. <laughs> um, all my work just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And then in December, when January's work got pushed, I went, need to do something. <laughs> so I went and revisited the Care Connector and looked at it from not just uh, having a Facebook group, but also doing networking and network and learn sessions and supporting ones like the weekly huddle that we do on a Wednesday morning. Um, to actually help the people in the care sector and also help the suppliers that supply into the care sector. 
And one of the things that's funny is, is we have never discussed COVID in anything that we've ever done. In fact, it's banned, right? I tell people when, when, we, when it was all starting off in January, that if you mention the word COVID, you had to put five pound into a charity. And the reason for that was, is because everyone else was discussing it. But there's everything else in care that was like, that wasn't infection control or COVID based was getting sort of left behind. And that's why we looked at everything but. So we've covered things like um, gender and gender awareness in the sector. Um, last month or last the other week there, we did self-care and, um, you know, well-being. We've done nutrition and hydration. We've done, you know, electronic care planning and stuff like that. But we haven't covered COVID or infection control. And I did that on purpose, you know. Because as, as you say, there's a lot of groups out there and they were all discussing that. And I wanted to keep it a space that they could discuss other things and, you know, not have all the other, that other stuff being piled on top of it and it being missed, which is why um, I spoke, I've spoke to Mark about this and I spoke to Jane about this, that we're going to look at creating a social media platform solely for the care sector away from linkedin and facebook because people are just they've they've obviously messed with the algorithms again because my post recently even advertising out to look for people to do training for other for people within the, the network are getting like 16 views and you're like how can that you know how can people find what they're looking for if people are not seeing the posts, you know, mm. it's as you say, like with Jane, you've got over 6,000 people, and I'm sure that there's more than, you know, 40, 50 people posting a day, but to go and find it, you've got to go digging around in in the Facebook groups to find stuff, and it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I think from a business perspective and um, a networking perspective that LinkedIn and Facebook are not great anymore because even within my own group, they're asking me if I want to actually boost it and pay to get people in my network to see what I'm posting in my network. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> Facebook's a, a odd network now because unless you're actually in a group on Facebook, it's seldom that you come across anything that matters to you on, on a normal newsfeed. Mm -hmm. Um, I will. I mean, I love LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm a LinkedIn baby. I only started at the beginning of this year on LinkedIn, and I'm, you know, I'm hot line and sinkered with with LinkedIn. I, I'm finding it great to network. I think one of the, the the interesting things I think you said then that's that's really sort of made me go. I agree. Is people remembering that there is other stuff going on in the world other than COVID, and we have this conversation so many times because people, you know, will. The media have found me numerous times over the last week going, and do you think this is right to protect people from COVID? Do you think this is going to keep people safe? And I, every single person I talk to, goes, can we just stop calling things safe and thinking that sorting out COVID is going to keep them safe? Because having no staff is not going to keep them safe. So, no, I don't think it's going to keep them safe. I think there's going to be other issues. So the idea that actually let's not just talk about COVID, let's talk about other things is is warranted. And I think, yes, a safe space, a, a website just for social care connections would be a great thing. Um, it probably has a purpose, and a purpose that will meet the, the needs of, of many managers and in, in carers around the country. Um, in your groups, I mean, Jane, we've spoken about negativity just now, but Dawn mentioned at the beginning of the show about the, the care worker who lost um, her role because she wouldn't get doubly vaccinated um, and put up a, a heart-wrenching video about it, you know, literally... Blair Witch crying on a phone in a car, snap bubbles, everything. It was just heartbreaking. And then the abuse she got on that video to basically go, well, you should have done it, or you, you know, you deserve this, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you think that has some bearing into why people don't share enough in these groups and don't comment as much? Yeah, and I and I think people should be cautious about what they post in you know you're even if you're in a private group on Facebook you are still on social media and whether you like it or not what you post 
is out there for everyone to see. And we we keep it private purposely and we're quite careful about who we let on. But people will lie their way onto groups. And we know we've had you know, posts copied and pasted and sent on to commissioners and CQC inspectors. So I always say to people, don't post stuff that will get you you know, into trouble or will have people questioning what you're doing or yes, post your feelings and your you know, raw emotions if you need to, if you need support, post your questions because that's exactly what it's for. We hope there aren't people on there spying or, you know, looking at what we're doing. But the reality is it is a very public network. And I always say to people, just be really cautious what you're posting. Think twice, you know, if it, if it got into the wrong hands. Could it be misconstrued or seen as something negative? So, you know, we've just got to be a bit careful, haven't we, on a on a public platform? I think there is there is support though for people that are struggling or if they do put up, you know, something negative. And I think there is definitely one group that I'm part of. It's neither of yours two, and there's over a thousand. And it it's it's quite often you know, what people are struggling with, what managers are struggling with or deputies. And then I think it goes two ways. There's either a bundle of support for the person or it ends up in a kind of, you should have done this or you shouldn't have done that. Or yeah, it's either one way or the other. There's no kind of middle ground. And I think then people start jumping on it. And I think it's hard, isn't it? I think it depends as well when you put that post up, how you approach it. I think it depends whether it's the same people or not that are doing it. But yeah, it's definitely hard. I think you're right, Jane, though. I think the end of the day anybody could be on that group screenshotting it and i think definitely on some of the care worker ones that i'm in from back in the day when i was a care and support worker is people do screenshot it and then i i've got a whatsapp group that i set up at the beginning of the covid for care and support workers there's about 600 people in it but i do quite often then see screenshots from groups on facebook that are then shared on the whatsapp and i'm sure that's probably the same on on other groups so yeah you are right and yeah good advice just to be mindful of what and once it's on there, it's in the public domain, isn't it? It is, you know, it yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think as well, it's not just care networks. It's any group that you're on in Facebook. I mean, I, I, I have Whippets and I'm in a Whippet group on Facebook. And like sometimes they just get really vile with each other. And I think to myself, can I actually take this drama just to be in a Whippet group? I just want to see pictures of people's Whippets. Whippets <laughs> playing drums, isn't it? Hey. It's also massively how it's interpreted because when you're not sitting in front of somebody having a conversation, it can be completely misconstrued. And I've seen that a couple of, well, actually a couple, loads of times on these groups where somebody's asked a question and, and put a comment and people have completely taken that the wrong way. And sometimes it's, it's more about how you word something, because when you're not sitting in front of somebody, it's really difficult to construe how that how that question or how that conversation will go. Yeah, completely. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially when you're like me, dyslexic, um, it's probably why I don't post as much as I sh should, because I've got lots of stuff in here. But I don't put it out there because I think to myself, well, someone's going to take that the wrong way. <laughs> You know, the amount of times that I've written stuff and then just binned it because I didn't want to put it out there. Yeah. You know. And I think this is what's wonderful about WhatsApp. I mean, I can't understand why a, a social network hasn't done the same thing because we voice chat all the time on WhatsApp. You know, it's just like picking up the phone and you can talk, you've got inflection in your voice, you've got intention in your voice, whereas your grammar's bad, which mine is, and, you know, not everyone's um, perfect with grammar. I don't think anybody is nowadays. Um, things get lost in translation. So to be able to have a voice function would be fantastic. You imagine on Facebook just being able to sit there and go, oh my gosh, I never believe what happened today. My CQC inspector comes in, blah, 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 blah. And you'll sit and you can hear what it is in their voice. That it, You connect to it as well, don't you? So that would be a fantastic option. And I don't understand why people don't do video messages more because, again, you, you do get them. I will say there have been a few that have come around recently of managers on video messaging and posting things and they've got umpteen likes and they've been shared thousands of times and i've sat there and gone really you're you're sharing that and that's getting praise oh and we wonder why there's sort of a jarring sensation with with, with the care community and, and the public um you know for, for people who are watching this you might not be managers and you know thinking about us 
about filtering our, our voices in these groups. It's not because we do bad things. Everyone makes mistakes. It's just afraid to go, I think I'm making a mistake. Can someone help me? And then being turned around and used against people. I think what we need to recognize is someone's there going, I think I'm doing something wrong. That's the first step of doing something right. If you think you're doing something wrong and don't ask for help and don't go to these groups for support, then nothing will ever change and care standards will slip. But if you think you're doing something wrong and you want to go into a group and go, I think I'm doing something wrong. I don't really want to talk about it. Can someone message me or can I chat to admin to see if they will do an anonymous post for me, which you've done a number of times, Jane, and putting up those anonymous posts. I mean, do they go down well? How do people approach you for those anon posts? Yeah, they, they tend to just private message me and say, I, I really want to post this, but I'm nervous or there's somebody else in the group that might recognise where it's come from or, you know, something along those lines. And so I'm, I'm quite happy to just pop that up in a post for them and you know, help them to get their answers and, and not feel you know ashamed of posting it or nervous about posting it. And I do, I do talk to managers a lot who say I'm really nervous to post because I'm worried that someone will pick me up on something I've said wrong or no, no, I, I, I hope it's not that kind of place. I hope that we keep it as, as kind as possible. And as we said earlier, you know, we have, we have had some rogue elements on there and we get rid of them as, as quickly as we can find them. Cause it's not about that. It's about support and, and, you know, encouraging each other. Yeah. One of the things that, oh, sorry to jump in, Adam. One of the things that we're um, looking at doing with the Care Connector Network is the masked provider. Um, and we're going down, we've got managers already that are going to come on and talk to us. And we're going to disguise A, their face and their voice. And cool. it's going to allow people to open up. We'll make sure that it's like not stuff that is you know wrong um or anything like that but it'll allow i feel it will allow people to um open up a bit more so that they can get the help and support that they need do find that a lot of care managers are very reserved let's say in saying what the actual problems are um and because of what you just said there, a fear of retribution or them feeling that they're not good enough for doing what they're doing or things like that. And we want to take that away so that we as both as both as um, suppliers, but also within the sector can start looking at it going, right, OK, well, they've got this problem. So it's OK to talk about that because we can now deal with that, you know. And we can talk as suppliers to the providers in their language because we seem to be sitting in two different camps. We're, we're both trying to achieve the same thing, but the language is different and, the, and it's not coming across the, the same way. I mean, you talked about the thousand pound and where we can get the money from for that. I mean, we spend 19.2 billion pound a year on treating malnutrition in this country. Well, let's start there, shall we? £19.2 billion is spent on treating malnutrition. You know, it's just a phenomenal figure. You know, that's 16 new hospitals or 746,000 nurses. You know, it, so by finding out what the actual problems are for real, we can then actually make, move that into solving the problems for people. Can I play a bit of devil's advocate here, Ian? Because I'm just wondering, mm. with the banning of COVID and the discussion of COVID, I know that is all I have talked about for the last, last 19 months. I've been a registered manager. We've had outbreaks. We've lost residents. Yeah. And that is my, I'll be honest with you, I'm still talking about it as much as I did last March because it is the lived experience of COVID so what benefits do you feel that the participants of your group get by not discussing it? Because every, every registered manager I talk to wants to talk about COVID, guidance, vaccinations, mandates. So what can they get from your group when they're not talking about COVID or infection control? Well, one of the things is, is that 
I mean, I talk individually to people about COVID. You know, if someone, you know, I speak to a lot of managers um, and I will speak individually about it. I just wanted to give people another place, a place that they could come to talk about something else, you know, that they can come and find out a bit more about something different and find out from the smaller suppliers out there as well and get that, get the support that they need in other areas. Um, I mean, as I say, we do on the on the weekly huddle, we have discussed it now recently because of everything that's been going on. On the actual network and learn sessions that we have, the two network and learn sessions, we don't talk. We haven't talked about it. We haven't done it. We haven't covered it. It has come into the weekly huddle stuff because we've started talking about more of how we can help going forward and that sort of side of it. But, you know, when I've been speaking to managers as well, they've said that they like it because it does give them a break from that and talking about COVID and talking about infection control, you know, because everyone else does. And as we know, all the algorithms that are in Facebook and LinkedIn, if people are commenting and especially putting the angry faces, it pushes it up the list. I found that out last week. That if you put an angry face on a Facebook post, it actually increases the amount of people that will see it. So if we all, instead of all liking, if we all angry face, then, then everyone will get to see everyone's post. <laughs> God, it seems so counter counterintuitive having that, having negativity be to, to be positive. I mean, it's, it it's Facebook, isn't it? Facebook don't like yeah. groups because they can't advertise in them. Yeah. I mean, Dawn, you've gone and you've admitted, you know, just just in this this chat tonight, you went from not being in any Facebook groups to joining them, um, you know, towards the end of last year, beginning of this year, to now being an admin on the Caring Views own um, Facebook group, um, and you know, Jane's group is for for managers, registered managers, deputy managers, and the such. Obviously, Ian, you've explained what your group's about. We thought we'd make our job even harder and include everyone. So we've got, you know, we've got we've got relatives, we've got people who are um, relying on care services, who are, you know, who, who need us to be able to support them to live those independent lives. We've got care assistants, we've got um, ex-relatives, we've got people just interested in social care, we've got a documentary maker, you know, we've got all sorts now in our group having these very open, candid conversations. Do you think that is the right approach for our group Dawn. do you think that open sort of culture is the right way for us to go in our in our little room yeah absolutely i think that we need to we needed to open up the care in view because that is the point of the care in view it is a view on care so we needed to open it up to the extent where we incorporated everybody in one safe space and yeah, we have had some negative stuff on the care and view, but we've allowed it to kind of roll to an extent where we've incorporated everybody's opinion. And we've also incorporated people like Rights for Residents and the Johns campaign and um, at, and carers groups and relatives and you name it, everybody's within. So everybody kind of, kind of gets a view. So I'm really proud of that Facebook group that we've kind of opened it to the wider scope because I think if we didn't, then could you call us the care and view? Because we're not giving everybody the view. We've got to give everybody an opinion. Oh, that could be a new caption. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, I, I, was, I was actually about to say, I hope this is recorded because you just said some quality stuff there that I think we need to use on marketing. Sorry, Mark, come in. I am actually on the ball this week in a Sony Tuesday. I would like to point out, honestly, Jane, I am on the ball. I think sometimes with, with the negative comments, when people comment, you know, it's a learning curve as well, isn't it? Because I think sometimes you just see it from whatever your point of view is. And actually, if you open up that debate and that conversation, then actually you can learn. And it might be that you still don't agree with what the other person is saying, but at least it allows it to educate you into what other people think. And I think sometimes, you know, on the Caring View one, we've seen people, you know, when we've talked about, you know, whether care homes should open, you know, to relatives, you know, we hear... The manager's point of view we hear the staff members point of view we hear the relatives point of view the fours the, the against you know 
and yeah, it just allows you to then make an informed decision about actually what you want to do going forward, which is what it's all about. Like you said, Dawn, it's hearing everybody's opinion that works in social care, draws on social care, or just is involved or wants to know more. So we're near the end of um, 2021. Jane and Ian, what are your plans for 2022 with your Facebook groups? I mean, I'm sure it will be, well, maybe not in Ian's so much, but definitely Jane's. I'm sure COVID will still be around in there. Ian, yours won't. But yeah, what are your plans for, for, I nearly said for COVID for 2022, but yeah, your plans for your Facebook groups in 2022. <laughs> Jane, do you want to go first? I'll go first, yeah. Uh, so we've started some really interesting kind of ideas around having sort of experts in the group who aren't selling, but they're there to just support with kind of questions that come up. And it, it started really with Sonia, who is a friend of the show, I know, uh, from Nectar HR. And she joined, she's fab, and she joined the group and she's sort of commenting on posts where people are questioning you know HR decisions or or things that they're doing sort of HR wise contracting wise and she's really valuable in offering you know a sensible comment to people and and we did a Facebook live last week which was a tragedy let me tell you not from Sonia's point of view from but from my side in terms of the tech because I'm an absolute idiot when it comes to stuff like that but I will get better at it <laughs> Sonia was fabulous and just nailed it completely and and she's done a couple of other little videos about you know really topical things that have come up so I'd like to see a bit more of that where we maybe have some really kind of top-notch experts who aren't on the group selling as such of course they might sell as a result of that which is absolutely fine and right and proper but they're actually there just to offer a, a guiding hand when stuff comes up Ian, before you come in, Jane, I, I watched that with Sonia. I started on my iPad and I had just your face. I then moved on to my laptop and all I could see was Sonia. And then I thought, I don't know what's going on. I drew it on my phone. And then I could see both. And the most, the funniest thing was when your doorbell went. <laughs> I just, at that point, I lost it. I just couldn't keep it together. Like, so. <laughs> seriously, honestly, it was like the worst moment ever. And, and I went down to answer it. I have to tell you this. It was Amazon with a bottle of alcohol that I'd ordered. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I need your ID. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm in the middle of something here. And he's like, go and get your ID. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was the funniest thing ever. Um, um, Ian, what are your plans for 2022? I think my plans for the network is uh, I'll always keep the Facebook page going, I'll always do stuff on LinkedIn. But um, looking at the Mighty Network and building that and creating that as a, as a platform, as I say, as a social media and learning platform um, that we can have it, it's very clean as mark seen it um jane's seen it and also uh dean i showed him today he's on the call tonight um and it's very clean it's it's very easy to read everything's in chronological order you don't lose anything like you do and where you click off and you come back and go oh, I'll, look, I'll look at that later <laughs> where's it gone <laughs> it's disappeared into the ether so that's not going to happen. That will be there. That will be there for people. We can have open groups. We can have closed groups that are private, you know, as well um, within within the network. So for me, it's going to be about building that up and building the Care Connector as in, in general um, from a point of view of bringing, you know, the managers and the um, suppliers in. I mean, we've got 300 now, just under 300 on the Facebook group as I say, started this year, um, and we've probably got, I would say, 60, 40 in favor of managers at the minute, 60, 40% managers, or managing people. It's not just managers. We've got head chefs and catering managers and stuff and things like that on as well. So that's where I'm at. I, I think something, yeah, and I think something needs to be said, because I remember a couple of groups I tried to join and they're like, mm, are you a registered manager, though? Are you a registered manager, though? Because can't come through these doors if you're not a registered manager, though. And I'm like, no, but I'm an aspiring registered manager who actually needs some support and want to become a registered manager and thought I could join your group to get that support. No, you can't come in, though. 
I was like, all right, fine. See, that's what James Group is. Me. Best that's group around. That's what, it's what sorry, worry Dawn. me. It was that type of thing. That's, that's the thing that used to worry me. It was that type of thing of, oh my God, what if they don't let me in? What if they ask, you know, what if they ask questions of me? What if I don't answer them right? It's that kind of concern over that type of thing. And that's why it took me a long time to join anything like that. And I think that's yeah. why we've seen some spin-off groups, isn't there? Because I think if you're not a registered manager, but you're a care manager or, you know, you've just got a manager's post, but you're not, not yet registered, you know, some of those groups won't let you in. So then we've seen registered manager groups pop up. You obviously got care and support workers that pop up. There's obviously some for the NHS. And I think the NHS is similar because the nurses can't be allowed in some because there's a lot of nurse groups around. And I think, yeah, you know, like Dawn said, actually, why not just get, you know, if you're in a management position, you know, let people in, you know, and yeah, upskill people with, with the group. Because there's so much skilling on there. Yeah. I mean, one post I put up, I mean, I know it sounds awful, this, you know, I got a registered manager's post and then left like a month later, but it wasn't because of the registered manager post. I've obviously got a new opportunity came around. But one of the, the biggest posts I put up was just this huge lengthy post of, this is what CQC asked me on my interview. They asked this, they asked this, they asked this, they asked this, they asked this. And everyone was like, oh my God, and just absorbed it. So like, this is what I need. I need this. I've got an interview next week. This is fantastic. And if you, if you block them from a group, they're not going to see that help. So I could have put that up and everyone could have gone, why put that up and registered? I, don't help me. It don't, don't matter to me. And why should we go and have to find 15 groups to be in to replicate all this information? Because we know just from posting links to, to the show on a Tuesday night that it takes its time. And I say huge thank you to these groups that do allow us to, to post in there to say this is what's going on. Because we aren't selling anything. We don't make money on this. It's not monetized. We do all of this in our own time. But it's co-production, Dawn, to work together. <laughs> Dawn's favorite word, co-production. To work Always together to like elevate. <laughs> okay, co-production, Dawn. Uh, <laughs> to help elevate the sector and to help elevate that public image. And we need to work together. You know, we need to be accepting of everyone to go, well, actually, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We're both going to benefit the sector. You know, I'm not saying, you know, people should be go out to go in and go, have you bought this mattress, buy this mattress, buy this mattress. But we should be able to all work into it. Awesome. Yes. Not on mute for a change. We should all be able to do that. Um, I must apologise. I'm going to have to leave Ian and Jane in the wonderful hands of Dawn and Mark. Um, I have another engagement that I need to dash off to at half eight. So I just want to say a huge thank you for being here tonight. And I've absolutely loved it. Um, and Jane, I know before you go, you have a point to bring up about the £500 bonus. So I apologise if I messed stuff up. So please feel free to mention that. But thank you so much for joining us. See you later. Before you bring up that point, um, Jane, regarding £500 bonus, I think Adam raised a really good point around, you know, the type of content that can be shared. So obviously, you know, it's not a secret, I write a column for Love My Care. And I, I write it because I have people that contact me and say, can you write one on, you know, fluid, or can you write one on oral care or whatever? And I then just share it into the manager network, because actually I only write them because I hope that somebody reading it, whether that's somebody that works in social care, uses social care, that you know has a loved one that uses social care, can just benefit from it and actually just raises a bit of awareness. But so many of the groups block it because it's obviously with a paid organization. I think it's got nothing, nothing really to do with what the organization does. It's actually the article itself. And then what I find is that if I take it out of that article and share it, then they'll, but then it's obviously really long and it's obviously not in the context that the article, you know, and the column puts it in, but, yeah, and I think, like Adam said, actually, it's just about, you know, everybody coming together, using whatever somebody shared and, yeah, utilising it for the better. So, Jane, what was your, your thing about the NHS? Yeah, so at the beginning of the show, you were talking about the £1,000 stroke £500 bonus for care workers. And it was sort of said that the NHS have waded in and said it should be less should be the 500 pounds not the thousand it's not actually the nhs that have said that it's nhs providers which is like a membership body for nhs people and organizations so it's not actually like nhs organizations or workers who have said that just wanted to clarify that because i think it it puts like a negative light on the nhs saying mm -hmm. oh social care shouldn't get a thousand pounds each and actually that's not what's happened so i think i think it's a bit of a red herring I think, Jane, you need to ring up the BBC News. 
is they're advertising that very fact that the NHS has said social care should get less. Yeah. So if that's you're really watching at all, please yeah. create better journalism. We've got to stop pitting social care and the NHS against each other. It's time yeah. we because you know I the, the NHS people that A I came across at the Institute and now I'm coming across it X are absolutely positive and glowing and want to work with social care. I've not spoken to one negative person who's like, oh, social care, not once. So, you know, I, I think on the ground, we all want the same thing. Just someone seems to have this vendetta and creating a problem between the two, you know, between the two sectors. It's not there. Good. Yeah. So, Mark, what have we got coming up next week? Tell us. Next week, we are joined by, a, well, I believe that she is actually a physio by trade, but she's written a book called Big Bear, Little Bear and Dementia. Um, so it's written by a lady called Katie Faulkner. So she's going to be joining us coming on to talk about the role of physiotherapy within social care, her book and what led her to write the book. And I believe that it's removed the him and her and it's based on the LGB um, characteristics which is great so i know adam's a big fan of the book he's already got it i don't have it yet but it is on order but yeah no, so we've got her coming on next week which will be exciting Brilliant. okay so thank you so much to jane thank you so much to ian thank you for your time it's been absolutely amazing no doubt we'll see you both again soon and we'll end the show with a big christmas advent wave ian You've got to wave the Christmas trees behind you. So everybody get your nominations in at the Care and View. Thank I'll you. I'll close Bye. it off with the Advent calendar. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. Today, the Care and View team heard a quote from our new care apprentice, Mr. Ed Balls, in which he cited, I thought I understood what social care was and I didn't. We've all endured this lived experience over the last 19 months. And this Christmas at the Care and View, we want to celebrate you all with our very own Christmas Advent campaign each day through December. We want to open the doors of our Advent calendar, not just to chocolate, but to all of you and your amazing work throughout the services or anybody associated with social care. We need your nominations with an explanation of how wonderful you are and all the amazing things that you've done over the past 18, 19 months. And we want to hear from all services, not just elderly care home services, but across the board in social care. We want people like Ed Balls, to have an understanding of social care and the amazing work done each and every day. It can be a team, it can be an individual, or even somebody in receipt of care. We love to share your stories, and what better way to share Christmas joy all through December if it's not embracing social care. So please send these to thecareinview at gmail.com. There should be a little banner running across the screen and with pictures and videos, and of course, so much detail, and we can't wait to receive them.